Hello everybody, uh, my name is Alexander Yakutovich. I am a research scientist at EMPA. In this presentation I'm going to discuss IDLAB, um, which allows to make complex scientific workflows accessible and shareable. But what does it mean in practice? Well, the most important feature of IDLAB is the usability of uh, computational tools. Um, IDLAB combines uh, Jupyter notebooks that are facing the user with uh, IDA word chains and makes them accessible. At the same time, IDA Lab, um, since it is based on IDA, has all the nice features of IDA. So uh, IDA uh, provides the infrastructure to define complex workflows with advanced error handling. At the same time, time AIDA is coming with the automated, robust and scalable engine to run those workflows. Also, um, AIDA is a, is a data management tool because whatever calculation you run with AIDA, AIDA will take care of recording those data and make sure to also keep the data provenance. So essentially it makes uh, the stored data interoperable and queryable automatically. On the right side, you see uh, an example of such an application, a quantum espresso application, where we can actually directly access the results of, uh, of the uh, band structure calculation and display it uh, right in front of us. So what is AIDA? It, it is a scalable workflow engine uh, that allows to run uh, thousands of simulation uh, in parallel. It comes up with an automated uh, full data provenance. So all the simulation data that are used as an inputs, all the simulations and the output data that are generated as the results of the simulations are stored together with the uh, data provenance. At the same time, it comes in with uh, built-in support for uh, high-performance computing and it uh, provides a flexible plugin system. So if you're interested or you're uh, would like to use a specific code uh, with AIDA, have a look at the uh, plugin registry where we can see a list of codes that are already supported by AIDA. If you don't find your code, you can also think of um, creating a plugin for your code and put it to the registry. Um, AIDA is written in Python. It comes up with a MIT license, so it's fully open source and uh, you can find the source code uh, from the following link. AIDA itself is, a, you know, this is a simulation manager, uh, but this is um, built on top of um, Postgres database to store the results of the simulation and also the input data. And also AIDA uses a RabbitMQ message broker um, to interact with processes. At the same time, uh, AIDA is not suitable for for everybody, uh, for everybody, because it uh, only comes uh, with a um, uh, command line interface. Therefore, uh, we have built IDLAB, which uh, simplifies the access to IDA. Finally, I would like to uh, point your attention to this um, artistic representation of IDA database to just give you an idea how um, how big and complex a real database can become. And if you if one, one would be able to zoom in, one would see the, uh, the vertices and edges representing the um, uh, data points and the connection between those data points. In the following slide, I will show the uh, IDLAB architecture. It all starts with uh, a Postgres database to store the data and uh, um, a RabbitMQ message broker. Those are the prerequisites for, for AIDA uh, to run. Then uh, there is AIDA uh, that, that allows to uh, run uh, complex simulations and high throughput simulation, uh, simulations connecting to supercomputer and executing uh, codes installed on these supercomputers. Uh, then we have um, automated work chains that uh, interface to Jupyter notebooks and that together provides a an easy interface for user to run complex simulations. Um, as I already mentioned, uh, Jupyter Notebook plus um, INAIDA or chain uh, form a basis for, for an IDLAB application. 
And those applications are managed by the home application of IDLAB, um, which does not only show the installed ones, but also uh, contains, the, contains the app registry where you can select application for your needs and install it on your IDLAB instance. This is all run within a Docker container, so um, every user uh, has the whole software stack for them that runs uh, inside the Docker container. Here, what I'm showing is one user setup. If IDLAB runs in the web server, um, then we, we provide uh, multi-user uh, access uh, managed by, uh, by JupyterHub. Uh, JupyterHub is, is a proxy that um, sends a logged-in user uh, to their dedicated container. Essentially, every user will have their own container that is completely independent from all the others. And that's, uh, as in, and that's how the complete architecture of IDLAB looks like. All right. Before actually showing the real applications, I would like to emphasize also the fact that um, IDLAB does not only provide an easy way to run simulations, but uh, the application that you will, um, will see further in the slides are relatively easy to build. Thanks to the um, integration with Jupyter Notebook and App Mode, uh, the source code of um, uh, the Python source code that you one typically puts into Jupyter Notebook can be hidden, leaving us only with the with the output uh, with the output, which um, acts as a front end. Uh, basic functionality is already uh, implemented and uh, provided in uh, IPy widget library and also in the IDLA uh, base widget library that are developed by us. So in this example, we have a structure manager that uh, allows to, um, to upload a structure using different resources. It also um, provides some editors if um, an editor is not present in the standard library. You can build your, uh, your own. It's uh, relatively easy to do. And then uh, all these things can be combined and reused uh, in, uh, in the applications. Actually, uh, uh, this exact tool will be used, uh, reused in all the applications that I'm going to show further. And the rest of the presentation will be dedicated to examples of uh, IDLAB applications. So I will show three. Uh, first one will be EMPA on Surface Chemistry app to study uh, molecules on surfaces. The second one will be a quantum espresso application to run quantum espresso simulations. And the last one will be SSSP a pseudo potential toolkit app. A surface chemistry app um, was developed by EMPA um, and um, is meant to provide experimental scientists with an easy to use uh, interface to run complex simulations to study molecules on surface. In this specific example, we put structure as a smiles string into, into the, the, the form. Uh, then uh, we generate the molecule. Once this is done, uh, we provide a um, slab builder that is able to put slab under the molecule. So that's how it looks like. Here uh, we put um, gold 111 under benzene molecule. Then, uh, once we're happy with the molecule, we can uh, select a few parameters to run the simulation, and then we submit it. Once the simulation is completed, it will be present in the uh, search database. Uh, there is a, specific, a dedicated notebook that's called search. If you click on this, you will see all the uh, optimized structure that are present in the user's database. In addition to that, a uh, user can submit extra simulation for, for an optimized structure. And then those extra simulations will appear in the extra uh, column. For, for example, in, for this specific case, we have run a STM simulation for, for, the benzene, uh, for the benzene molecule on gold 111 substrate. And those are the results of, uh, of such simulations. So you can basically um, compare the experimental um, STM images and um, simulate the same images to understand whether your guess for the molecular structure is correct. Uh, the next example is quantum espresso application. 
Um, we import structure using Optimate Importer. Optimate is a, is a consortium uh, which uh, developed a protocol that allows to connect to different structure database and extract the structures from there. So we'll pick up uh, silicon oxide. So here, as you can see, we selected silicon and oxide. Um, and then we just uh, pull the structure from the database. So here's the structure. Then again, um, we can do modifications if we want to. And once we're happy with the result, we can uh, confirm the structure, select uh, the properties that we would like to uh, the simulate. It can be, you know, uh, structure optimization if we want to do that. We can also make sure that, uh, you know, structure is magnetic or non-magnetic. Um, if it's insulator or metal, we can decide whether to compute band structure or not. We can also uh, compute density of states again if we want to. We can also select uh, the protocol, which essentially means the, the quality of simulation, which ranges from uh, fast uh, to, to precise. And obviously, fast protocol will be very quick, but not precise, while precise uh, protocol will be um, of very high quality, but it will require significantly more computational resources. Then once this uh, simulation is submitted, uh, we can actually follow the uh, the the output of uh, Quantum Express uh, online. And then uh, once we have the results, we can uh, basically uh, review, them, review them just by selecting the, the head workflow in the workflow tree representation. In this specific case, um, we see the band structure and uh, density of states of silicon oxide. And the last application I'm going to talk about is Pseudo Potential Toolbox. This one allows to generate uh, pseudo potentials for plane wave codes and also test them against the results of a full electron code. Um, on the right side, you, see you have an interface that allows to create pseudo potential, which will be then uh, downloaded as a single file. Uh, the result can then be uploaded into uh, the quality verification notebook. And then uh, once the simulation is submitted, the user can actually uh, compare, see the comparison of the results against the uh, N2K full electron code. So here we're showing the results of uh, titanium. Uh, the first three ones are just different, different crystal structures of titanium uh, compared to the, uh, the full electron results. Uh, and the other ones are the oxides of titanium in different states. So as you can see, uh, here the results are pretty good. If we're interested, we can also uh, plot the results for a specific field of potential and compare it with the other one. Uh, finally, uh, the application suggests the uh, cutoff values for different properties computed with uh, the specific pseudo potentials. So all those values are provided here. Um, to conclude my uh, presentation, I would like to emphasize that um, IDLAB can launch and monitor workflows in the browser, and it's pretty user-friendly. That's why it allows uh, for faster integration between the simulations and experiments, uh, which leads to accelerated materials discovery and characterization. IDLAB has powerful apps available for DFT simulations, such as band structure simulation, uh, those geometry optimization, etc., and for pseudo potential generation and testing. Finally, uh, for those who are interested, uh, we'll provide a few links here that you can uh, check and see if um, IDLAB actually fits your needs. All right, so um, I would like to conclude my presentation by acknowledging all the people who contributed to IDLAB and to IDLAB project. And yeah, a lot of work and uh, thoughts were put into developing all this project. And finally, I would like to acknowledge the funding agencies. And of course, you for your kind attention. Thank you very much.